Hello, and welcome to UFO Connection. I'm your host, Cynthia Siegel. Have you ever wondered how to build a gravity control device? Well, guess what? Tonight you're going to learn how and see one demonstrated. We are so thrilled to have an amazing show for you tonight because a little over a year ago we had the inventor Jess Fritch on the show who said he was working on a gravity control device and if he just got a little more funding then he would come back on when he succeeded and demonstrate it. And guess what? He's back and he's going to demonstrate it for all of us tonight. It's remarkable. So stay tuned because you are going to learn all about gravity control and then see it demonstrated and then learn how to do it yourself. Do you believe it? Well, please join me in welcoming our very special guest, Jess Fritch. Jess, thank you for coming back on the show. Oh, I always love coming here. This, it was a lot of fun last time. It's a lot of fun tonight. I think it is remarkable. You promised us that when you succeeded at this, you would come back on the show and demonstrate it. And I thought, oh, we'll wait and see how long that takes. And it's only been just over a year. Well, believe it or not, I knew it would work back then. I do believe it. I just it. didn't have the equipment to do it. Now, and thanks to this show, I got funding. I got in touch with a group who is now funding me. And we're going to keep that the whole that secret. Okay, it's, you don't want to name who the people no. are. That's completely understandable. And but they, it's, it is, uh, I've gotten partial funding right now, and they're working on getting full, fu uh, full funding, hopefully within the next couple of months. And the full funding means I won't have to work. Oh. <laughs> I'll be doing this 100% of the so time. this has been your side hobby. Actually, and not a hobby. It's more of a, uh, a, a, passion. Uh, a passion and a job on the side. Yes. Yes. I, I worked at uh, Great America this year, and I co considered that as my part-time job. <laughs> right. That's what pays the bills, but this yeah. is what drives you. Right. So you actually built something, and you are going to show us a little later in the show when we understand more about this whole concept of what gravity control is all about. I'm going to take you through and teach you everything you need to know about it and show you how you can actually do it yourself. That is incredible. I mean, you know, every time I hear about inventors creating these wild things, it's like, there's no way I can do it, especially someone not technically proficient as myself. But you're saying you're not only going to say how to do it, but where people, who people can contact to get the parts for it. So it really is within reach of everyone. Mm -hmm. But it begs the question, which maybe we don't have to answer now, why hasn't it been done sooner if you're making it so accessible to all of us? It's because a lot of people don't know about this, and it's, it's on the Internet. Uh, Electrocovitics, which is called, is considered by most to be just if we got this, if it's developed. Mm -hmm. uh, they don't know that the United States government has fully developed it. Now, what, where, how do you know this? What and where is it being utilized by the U.S. government? Uh, about in 19... 95, I received a video from a friend who used to be a, well, he's no longer, but at the time he was a controller on the famous Nellis test range, the bombing range of the Nellis Air Force Base, where Area 51 is located. Actually, it's Groom Lake facility uh, of the United States' craft on government tracking cameras and radar. And they actually zoom in on it. Uh, if people get in, when they get in touch with me, I can actually get them a copy of that video. Okay. So, so what we're going to do at the end of the show is we're also go not only going to tell people how to get the parts that they might need for this device, but mm -hmm. also how to get in touch with you if they want to talk with you or get more right. information about anything. So that will be shown at the end of this episode. Correct. Air at the end. Okay. Now, Jess, is this new technology? Is this resurrected? I mean, how did you? come to work on something and develop this. Well, the inventor, Thomas Townsend Brown, started back in, in the mid-1920s, 1924. In fact, in 1925, he wrote an article titled, How I Control Gravitation. That long ago? Yes. Good uh, it took him, because this man had no college degree, he was uh, the kind of uh, perfectionist that by the time he put an experiment together, he went down to uh, Caltech back in the, uh, in the 1920s. Uh, by the time he put together 
of experiments because he was so precise, the bell would ring and he'd have to take everything down. So he never completed anything. Hmm. <laughs> oh, you mean in school? In, this is at Caltech College. Okay, okay. Uh, he then joined the Navy, the U.S. Navy, and because of his background in physics, they immediately sent him to Washington, D.C. at the Naval Institute there working as a full physicist. Okay. With other physicists which had Ph.D. degrees and he did an incredible life that he had. Okay, now we actually have a picture of Thomas Townsend Brown that we could look at for a moment right. while you're talking about him. So why don't we put that image up on the screen and you keep telling us about this man's remarkable life right. that led to you being about to demonstrate. Uh, uh, he is the inventor uh, back in World War II, uh, the P-38, which was a, uh, a fighter, uh, had a vibration problem. He invented a vibration dampening device which corrected that aircraft. Mm. and made it one of the best uh, fighter airplanes during World War II. Uh, he invented, uh, for the Navy, they'd have mine uh, sweepers. And what they used to do is they'd have a barge that they tow behind the ship. And if it hit a mine in the darn barge, would sink. Mm. And so they, they had problems with that. Then they came up with a cable. Well, the cable, when it hit a mine, it would blow up and sink also. He invented a cable which blows the mine up and doesn't sink. And it's still in use today. In fact, that patent is still classified. Wow. Okay. Now let's fast forward on Thomas Townsend Brown's life. Was he messed out? Now, how did he end up getting involved in gravity control? Was this a side hobby? Was he doing it for the government? Actually, back in the mid 20s, he was an assistant to an astronomer by the name of Byfield. Okay. And Byfield now was a classmate of Albert Einstein. Oh my. And. During uh, Byfield's research in, uh, in astronomy, he was seen because stars throw off what's known as gravity waves. Okay. And they were, they've been for years trying to detect these gravity waves and have not been able to do it. He saw something in it and he took it over to Brown and said, take this and see what you can do with it. And Brown asked him, he said, well, what device could be used to create this? And Byfield saw for a second and said, a capacitor. Okay, define now, a cap capacitor for us non-technical types, Jess. A capacitor is a reservoir for electricity, okay. like a reservoir for water. Okay. It holds the water back and it stores that electricity. The beautiful thing about it, what Brown found out, you see, with these capacitors, even though you turn the device off, the capacitor still has a charge. It stays there permanently. What do you mean permanently? Now, when you turn off an electrical device, the electricity goes off. So are you saying that once you put electricity, electricity into this, unless you're draining it off, it stays there? That's correct. Doesn't uh, other things that we have, doesn't the electricity gradually deplete, even if it's not being in officially some, drained in off? In some it does, but in most it doesn't. Okay. And it's how the capacitor is designed, how it's put together. Okay, so this is uh, a typical thing for a capacitor. But actually Nothing. a capacitor, some of them, and I've done experiments with a little simple capacitor with 25 volts in it. Okay. And it took a week to drain down. Okay, but this one, was there something unique about this capacitor you're referring to, or are you just... Well, most of them, if you remember the old TVs and that, they have warnings in the back, you know, high voltage warning, don't open the back. Well, that's because some of the capacitors in there are still fully charged. Even though you have that device turned off, you have to understand, when it turned off, the flow isn't moving as it goes through the wires. Okay. That doesn't mean it, it, the, 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 electrical, uh, the electrons are still all there. Okay. Okay, now you have a remarkable slideshow for us today. So why don't, tell me what we need to transition into to get rolling with that, because you're still telling us a little bit about Townsend's background. Well, what I'm going to show here, uh, we show the right flyer, and the thing about this technology, electrical physics, that everything from the Wright Brothers' first flight through the space shuttle constitutes the Stone Age of flight. Literally. Mm. Even the space shuttle? Yes. Uh, you have to understand that's a rocket propelled uh, ship. Okay. It has moving parts in it. The engines have to gimbal to uh, direct in that. This technology creates a disc craft with no moving parts oh, whatsoever. It. How can you? It's unlimited velocity acceleration. How is that possible? It's how this technology works. And that's, that's what you're going to explain That's to what us. we're going to get into. If we go to the next slide, 
That is something else. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm bringing you into Gravity 101. This is like your very first class in college, or you're going to learn on it. I'm going to teach you how this works. Okay. Now, this is a diagram to show, in a sense, a capacitor. You have your positive plate and your negative plate. And the material in the, in the center, like this yellow material, is your dielectric material. The dielectric is what holds this energy, this electricity. Okay. And the idea of, of how this craft works, it must be very high K. Now, when you say a K value, that's a constant. It's what they call the dielectric constant. It's how much electricity that particular material can hold. Okay. And you have different ones. Air that's all around us is dielectric uh, K of one. Okay. Now, what would, is there anything simple, an example you can give of a high K? So we have something to relate to. High K, you're getting into a metallic type uh, ceramic material, and the most I've seen so far about it is about 30,000 K. Okay. Is there like a household object that has a higher K of one? Mm, well, you have uh, in any of the uh, uh, electronic devices, there's capacitors that are higher than that. Okay. Uh, most are. I mean, air is one. That's the lowest, and is, uh, you go up from that. Copper will hold more, and so on. Okay. And it's the kind of materials. Uh, okay. Now. Next one. Next one here. What we've got here now, this is showing a disk. And what it does is you have the positive charge and the negative charge, as you've seen here, the forward area. It shows force going in the direction of the arrow that's under the, uh, the disk. Uh, that positive charge creates what's known as a gravity well. It's virtually taking the fabric of space around it and pushing it down. Gosh. And the negative charge is what's creating what's known as a gravity hill. It's actually pulling that fabric of space up. It's in reverse. The two together are creating this wave. The higher the pulse rate or the energy, the, the bigger the incline is of the wave. Mm, okay. And it move, that wave is going to move that craft towards the positive charge. Okay. So now, is it... This, I'm sure this is naive, so for you technical people out there, forgive me for my naive questions, but does it tip forward as a result of that well effect, or is it just a pulling forward? It's, it's actually riding it like a surfer on a surfboard on a wave. Uh, if you notice a lot of them, if you're on that wave, you're pretty steady, and they can walk back and they, they move it and forward and that. The craft, if it's slow, if it's just kind of hovering, it can stay still. If I use this device, here, if we can go back to uh, okay. us and that. This uh, I use as a demonstration. If it's still, it's going to stay still. If it moves a little bit, it, it may rock a little bit, but not that much. And it all depends on, on the control of your plates. If you have two forward and two back, these two are your positive charge, and these two are your negative charge, you're moving in this direction. Now, you want to go this way. It's simply by changing uh. this plate from positive to negative, and this one to from negative to positive. And that's done instantaneously, wow. virtually at the speed of light, the wow. electrons. And you're immediately going this way. That's how UFOs that we see make these incredible changes. It's how our craft works. Wow. And I say ours, I mean the United States government. Yeah. We're going to have to go into that, Jeff. Mm -hmm. What, okay, so you said earlier that you had a video that you saw our stuff, meaning the United States government, had some craft that we built using this anti, uh, using this gravity control. I know you corrected me before <laughs> the show. Don't call it anti-gravity; it's gravity right. control. The reason why I say that is because anti means the opposite of or to nullify. Okay. And that is not what this is doing. This is virtually controlling gravity. Really good. Well, you explained that so clearly in that last slide. So let's keep going. So if I could follow it, I'm impressed. You're doing a yeah. good job. So. so we go to the next one. Now, this is, this is actually taken from Brown, one of Brown's patents, oh. uh, showing a disk and how he did. Uh, the, the one area, the larger circle in the back, kind of half circle, is, pl is plexiglass. And then the center part of the circle is an aluminum uh, part of the disk. And then you have extenders out with the copper wire. The copper is your positive charge and the negative charge in the back. And what he did... If you see here on the right side, he had a T-pole, and he took and hung these off of it, and they were, about, they were uh, 18 inches in diameter, and he put 50,000 volts at 50 watts. That's a 50-watt light bulb. Okay. Very low amperage. He got 
movement of 12 miles per hour in a circle. Now then, when he pulsed it, and pulsing is like a uh, gravity kick, it's like if you're on a little scooter and you're, you're scooting along and you're kicking your, your right foot, that's, you're kicking, you're jerking it forward. Uh, that's essentially what we do with, with electricity in it. So it's, it's kicking it off. The it, uh, best way is like a timing circuit which uh, turns on and off real quick though. Uh, that caused acceleration of this T-pole, now the same voltage, same wattage, so great it nearly tore the rig apart. Wow. Absolutely incredible. Uh, uh, so just adding a pulse that. to this, given the design, mm -hmm. magnified it to incredible s levels. Right. They only work with a low amperage now. Amperage is what is where everyone has to worry about. That kills. High amperage is what you want to stay away from. Not the voltage, not the wattage. Mm. It's the amperage that hurts you. Uh, they used the pulse rate, which in a sense acts like a, uh, a throttle. So if you increase your pulse rate, you increase your speed. If you decrease your pulse rate, you slow down. But there's one thing that they didn't do, and that is to take the amperage and increase the amperage. If you increase it, I think you're going to get even more thrust. But you see, this is what's the only thing that's confusing me at this stage, and I'm sure you'll clarify it, is as you said, this has no moving parts. That's correct. So what is, what takes place to make that force change if they want to make a left or to go forward? I mean, if you want to stay still, you've got to change some things. What it's powers polarity. this to that's, start it's with? It's strictly the polarity. The polarity is your plus, or your positive or your negative. And you remember, we get movement towards the positive charge, always. Okay. And that's, so, that's the key. So if you want to switch, let's say you said it's traveling along like this, and you want to make it move this way, you switch, you know, the positive and negative position. What does the switching? It's, it's real simple to change the polarity. And it's, it's just like Very switching little a little effort. switch. And it's, it's done instantaneously. Okay. Okay, let's keep going. It's, it's, it's all in the electrical circuitry in, inside in the control force of, uh, of directional control for the craft. It gets involved on that. Yeah, okay. Okay. Let's go to our next slide. This is a diagram to show lift. And essentially, uh, if he, he had experience with a, uh, looked like an umbrella. And uh, you had your positive charge on the top of the umbrella, which was aluminum foil and and balsa wood, essentially. And then you have, in the middle, he had a long just down, and a smaller part down below, which was your negative charge. And then had like a line up and weights on it that would just mainly keep it stationary up above, not on the ground or anything. So that when it moved, the weight on the other side would come down as it's moved up. It was causing it to, in a sense, along the pulleys. And that's all that was there. The pulleys were not pulling it up. Mm -hmm. It was just enough to weight it and keep it in stationary. Okay. That was all it was for. Okay. Now, this is how you sandwich the material on the craft. If you're, if you're going in the outer skin of the craft in that, uh, this is actually upside down the way they drew the thing, but you'll notice like on the large triangle, uh, the arrow's pointing down towards the bigger end of it. If you had like a triangle shaped in that, the wider end is to where the force will go out. And then you have like the two plates. The two plates could be the outer skin, which would be aluminum, and be aluminum on the inside. Uh, it's simply set up that way and all around the skin. Hmm. So you might have something that's maybe six inches or maybe uh, eight inches thick, and it's of this dielectric material that's in there. Hmm. So it's not just, so you're, power source, the gravity control device, has to have the right designed item for it to be effective. Right. That interface is very important. Yeah. Okay. So we go to the next slide here. All right. Uh, this is also taken from one of Brown's patents, and this shows him designing how this material would be shaped inside there. Now, you have a lot of diagrams up there. Do you want to... Let's see here. Go through it a little here. bit for us. There we go. Oh, good one, Jeff. This right here 
it's kind of shaped. It's this area right here is the actual dial, uh, dielectric in that, and this is like space in between it. So and again, space. see this white area here? Is the outside. The force is going to go out this way. Out. And these are representing like a power source, which is going into it and through. And like uh, this right here, they might have had like two sections here, so you're getting force going in this way. And force going out means the direction the... It would go to outside of the craft. That would be Not the direction yet. the craft would end up flying in or being repelled mm, no, away it's, from? No, it's throwing this field in. If you remember the last time I told you about plasma field. Yes. And it creates this immense yes, energy yes. field around the craft. Okay. Uh, and I'll have a, a photo later on in that that will describe this, which is actually a frame from the video of the uh, America's disc craft. You can see the black craft itself. Oh. And that. Now, this right here is actual taken from the silent footage that I have of his experiments from 1958 through 1960. This is dielectric material. It's inside a, uh, uh, a vacuum chamber. Let's see if I can get it on here. This mm. is the, the outer edge of the uh, vacuum chamber right here. And this is the dielectric material, and they were charging this. Now, again, remember, this is the wider end right here, and up here is the wider end. So you're getting force up this way and down this way. So is it pressing towards the center? No, it's, it, it's actually pushing both ways. Pressing outwards. Yeah. Okay, so when you say force going out, that's sort of the direction it wants to go in. Right, and so what it's okay. going to do, if they had this one negative down here and this positive, it remember it's going to go up. Okay. Okay, and they're doing it inside a vacuum chamber, which means it's like it'd be out in outer space. Oh, good. And believe it or not, you see, back in 1960, no, wait, take it back, 1956, he went up to a report with the Air Force and that, and the uh, physicists with PhDs and that were saying, oh, it's producing ion wind. And that's an idea that they think of ion wind going over a, win uh, a wing surface and you know, causing lift like a normal airplane would do. Once he put it in the vacuum chamber, it disproved it because it works better. There's less resistance. There's less resistance, but it works a whole lot better. More efficient. Far more efficient and far more fa as faster and, and, and speed in that. Now, I have a question. Now, okay. you, the dialectic, again, if I'm getting this wrong, please do correct me. It look, you were talking about the wider area, how it was like a triangle going from wide to narrow, and the wide had to be the outer part. Which would be out here, on this be part of the, the oh, skin, okay. out this way. Because I'm looking at the skinny edge, and so, okay, so I see what you're saying. It goes see, like in here, it's all going to be out this way, and on the top, out this way. And if you were looking underneath here, it would be all coming out this way. Now, this is not the greatest design. This this is from uh, the Invaders. <laughs> the show, from it's the a old nice TV little series, which was a, little it's nice model. and easy to show as a as a demonstrator in that. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Very good. Thank you, Jess. All right. Let's keep going. This is very. You're doing a very good job of okay. explaining things. This, believe it or not, is a test rig that Brown made, and he, he used and put it in a uh, vacuum chamber. And doing flight, we had the just like the, the little model I was showing there. It has all that, but it's very interesting because it looks very familiar. Anyone who has been into UFO or uh, ufology studies and that remembers uh, Adamski. Yes. And Adamski took pictures. Well, this is the actual photo of Adamski. Look how close it was. Wow. And something very interesting. A lot of people don't know. Huh. Thomas Brown is the founder of the old NICAP. Oh. He founded it in 1956. Wow. Again, very important year. He was already seeing this technology and movement in that in the, 19, in the 1925. Wow. He already could see this at that time. He was, he was he experiencing was. of, of uh, ocean liners moving that vehicles, cars, lifts, all kinds of things, and using this technology to actually move. Wait, are you saying he took this technology, this gravity control device that he researched in the 50s and was putting it into cars and boats, et cetera, and No, he was not actually doing it. He was projecting theoretically. Projecting that they could be used for anything. That this could anything. be used. He was seeing this in his work, that this is what it could be done. It's just like I'm at a part where the power source that I'm working on and all the different uses that it can be used in. So uh, if... So if there's no oil available or people want to have transportation without relying on fossil fuels or something other renewable source, this is a device that might be applicable? 
Oh, yes. Can this, do you think this can be put into if, an automobile? Oh, yes, easily in that. How big uh, would, but how much would it take? Not very big, not very big. And you're talking maybe uh, six to eight inches square, maybe uh, two feet long. And that would be all the power you need to run the car. Uh, Brown actually developed a uh, electric motor based on electric vitics that had a million to one torque ratio. That's like a huge gear to a little small gear. Incredible uh, torque capability and power. Uh, that uh, electric motor would probably outdo a lot of the motors we have today in cars. Wow. As bigger as what a, a 300 horsepower, this thing would probably put out a thousand or, or, or even higher. What a man before his time. Yeah. Now, how come we don't hear about him? Did he fall? Well, this was developed for the United States Air Force. So it was their domain. It and was they had the money rights. was coming from the federal government for him to do the research. And uh, the video that I have, the silent video, which people can get and they can see his actual experiments. Because what he used to do is he would film a calendar and they'd circle the date. To indicate the date that they did it. You showed that on the last episode, didn't you? That when you were here, the uh, sounds. Not that one, no. I didn't oh, show okay. that one. That uh, must... And then they would uh, film the uh, the experiment. What they were using was a little simple eight millimeter home movie camera. I saw that video. You gave yeah, me a I copy have of that. I have yeah. that. And I have it available. Okay. Uh, and it's it's so, it's about 27 minutes long in that uh, the footage, but you got to go through it over and over and over again because you'll see all kinds of things. And if you get a hold of the patents that I have available, you start seeing. You're looking at his patents. You start seeing things in in the video that relate to it, including the motor. Wow. Everything. Uh, the power sources that he did. Uh, which were even simpler. They were just... Uh, so even though these were developed for the U.S. government, you somehow were able to have access to these. You would think that these would have been completely classified and not made available to the public. The video was found later uh, at a, one family where he worked at this gentleman's lab in, uh, I think it was in Ohio or something like that, down in that area. Uh, and it got out. And that's why I got copies of it. And a lot of the material I've had has all been in the public domain. Okay. Now, Jeff, everybody always needs to ask this question. You're doing something very revolutionary here that could upset a lot of big people. Have you had any problems, harassment, challenges to so your far, work? So far, no. Are you worried? I mean, That's you're going public I'm now. Now you're giving a demonstration. You're encouraging and telling other people how to do it themselves. Well, actually, there's a gentleman in France that's been doing this on the web for quite a few years now. And the government's not going to do anything because they think on the, on the Internet, everything is, if it's developed, if it's developed. They don't know. And a lot of these people out there, I'm the only one, it seems, to know that it has been developed. I mean, w you know, this is a question maybe later in the show, but after you demonstrate for us what you've got, what does it take to go to the next step to turn it into a practical everyday device? That's a big investment. That's a lot of work. That's, that's a lot what, of, that's, the that's more advanced than a little model it, that you're going to show right. us today. That's well, a big leap. This is a few years down the line, not very long. Maybe two to three years and I'll have a prototype craft built. Okay. Uh, the first thing is putting out the power source, and that I'm hoping to have out within one year. Uh, so people should stay in touch with you. If they want to go, this, this is taken from that silent footage, and this is the underside of the prototype craft that he built in 1960. It was a 16-foot diameter craft, what? manned wow. in 1960. Wow. Everything that we've seen out of NASA is for the public domain and public eye only. It is not the real space pro, uh, program. Well, some people have claimed over and over that NASA is, is nothing another. but a public relations thing to keep us distracted and, you know, yeah. feel good. I want to take you. This is an actual photo taken from that Nellis footage. The black area, let me get the arrow going here. I can get it. There we go. This area, the black, is the craft itself. The white area is this plasma fuel I told you about. It's immense power. I'm estimating probably close to 100 million volts oh. is being put out on this. Oh. Now, and you can see here, this is the white right here, and a little bit over here, and this a little more down here. This is a disk. Now, is part of the disk obstructed, like right. the back end of it? Right. It's because, and the way it's coming out like this, 
is because it's moving through the atmosphere very quickly. Uh, the beauty also about it is these things do not create a sonic boom. Wow. How come? Because when they turn the field on, it takes a little of the atmosphere inside of it, and it's like a hot knife going through butter. Okay. Now, more quick. Can you define what plasma is? Can we just hold off on the, this next slide for a moment? Can you take a moment to define what plasma is in case Plasma are not is sure. electrical energy. That's all. That's all it is. And remember, like I said, now we have a capacitor. Uh, if you go to a car, a lot of the older cars had coils in it. They really? were part of the electrical system for the ignition and that. And they were rated at 50,000 volts DC. Huh. Once in a while, if they were charged up good, because you don't want to do it even while they're that, because they stay charged, uh, they would glow a little bit at night. You could see it. Uh, but that's really low, and you don't often see it that much. It, it's only when you get into the much higher, even on the B-2 stealth bomber, which I'm going to get to, which is the low end use of this technology, the B-2 is not an airplane. What is it? It's a spacecraft. <laughs> it's a spacecraft. It uses gravity to fly. Are you going to explain? The four, the four jet engines on it, let's go to this one. This is an artist drawing of a best guess of what the craft looks like. And it's just a best guess. Uh, of the device that works most efficiently with Brown's this is device. What, no, this is actually what we think, the, uh, what I think the U.S. government's craft looks like. Wow, how very UFO-ish looking. Yes. Okay, let's go Do to You the ever next wonder one. why they, they don't want us to know about UFOs? Because <laughs> it's theirs. Right. Uh, not all of them, though. Uh, okay. I tell them, if it's black, Boomer. it's theirs. If it's, uh, is this a typo? Bomber. Bomber. Oh, I thought you were making some kind of political statement there. That's bomber. There. <laughs> and bomb. That's a good political... <laughs> I think that was a Freudian slip yeah. there, Jess. Okay, now this is also taken from Brown's patents. Okay. This shows, up here at the top, is a flame jet generator. It's like a jet engine, but it's mainly there to produce electricity. And it was coming out, the little plate of the, on the right is a collector plate for excess ions that runs back down through it. Here again, this is also from his, his uh, patents. It's like a disc using the same concept that he came into. Okay. Now you get through here. These are drawings showing how they do the B2 is that they charge the leading edge of the wings positive, and they put the negative ions out through the exhaust, and that creates this field around the craft. And, and why are you so convinced that, I, that it's not conventional? Is there uh, some plasma field you're seeing? A well, of, you know. you'll notice that they never show the B-2 flying through a cloud. Because like a normal airplane, the cloud is going to go over the wing like this. If this thing flew through it, it would go out like this. The cloud would go over <laughs> it. It would push over like that, yes. Hmm. Okay, let's go to the next and one. And in fact, my son used to be at Tinker Air Force Base. He's a staff sergeant in the Air Force. And he said that they would show a lead-in at the... Uh, Oops. Go ahead. Keep talking. Yeah. Uh, they would show a lead-in at, at... At the theater that would show the B-2 flying and so he through clouds. He says, Dad, you know what? You can tell they uh, they doctored the clouds. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. So if anybody sees something fly through a cloud and the cloud goes over it, uh -huh. that is using gravity control device. Okay, let's go to the next one. Okay. This shows the B-2. Now, I'm pointing the red arrows to the back area that's recessed behind the engines. Now, they tell us that it's recessed because of heat. Uh-huh. Well... Mathematically, electrical physics does not, or gravity does not create heat. It's recessed because that's where these excess ion collector plates are located. <laughs> ion collector. Okay, tell me again because I might have That's the say electrical ions and that, the, the negative charge. Okay. It comes out and it cuts, it's like a little collector so plate. So it's keeping pla a it plasma It brings in, field. you have a closed circuit within the, uh, the whole thing. Now this is taken from this silent footage. It's a wing. Keep and going. he keep talking. He actually showed lift with it. Let me go. Now this is how you can actually do it yourself. I'm gonna get through these things. This is a diagram showing this lifter. 
and how it's built. Now you can okay. go. Okay. Now this is already what we're looking at now is similar to your model that you're going to demonstrate. In fact, in just it's exactly a couple of, like it. It's exactly like what mm -hmm. the demonstration you model there. you're about to show us. Okay. Right. So everybody, pay attention because this is this it. This is it right here. Okay. But we're actually going to see it fl uh, fly. We have in one here. here in the studio, but now you're showing us pictures to and teach this, us. And this this is the power source that you can purchase in that that gives out it's 30,000 volts at one milliamp. That's one one thousandth of an amp. It's very low. It's 30 very watts. Low. It's 30, 30 watts of power. It's just enough to Most keep people's the, light bulbs are stronger than right. that. Right. It'll okay. give you if you, it'll now, give you a nice little jolt in that. So this is to get it started. Right. Okay, because you kept saying no power, you know, there's no power source, but yet here you're talking about a 30,000 volt power supply. Right. And we can go to this one later on. Okay, that's for later. Let's get rid yeah. of that for now. Now, okay, well, if you want to, we can do this. Okay, I want you to take a moment to explain what we're looking at. Okay. Because we went through that a little bit fast. Okay, we'll show you that. This line right here is a positive line, which comes down here from this power source. That goes up. There's a copper wire that goes from that down to the lead in of this, which is a copper wire that goes around the, the three sides. So it may not be picking up the, the copper wire on I'm the screen. I'm actually touching it with my fingers here. Okay. It's, it's yes. not showing up well on the TV. So you can see a little bit of movement it. right here yeah. on it. This comes all the way down and it touches at this point here. That's your positive charge. This down here this aluminum foil, that's all it is, it's, it's regular aluminum foil, you can buy it at any grocery store, you get the cheap, thin, lightweight. Okay. And this is, is put on using balsa wood, which is about one millimeter by two millimeters. Very lightweight wood. It's very, very lightweight. We all remember it's that. very, very fragile. When you build these things, you have to use a very light touch, okay. or you can break it. <laughs> okay. And so now this is, remember, is your, your negative plate and your positive plate, and this gap right here, is 30 millimeters, and it's very, very critical. That's your air gap or your dielectric material right here. There is a gap between the copper the wire, wire. The copper wire and the okay. aluminum foil. And that's in essential to do what, Jess? That's your dielectric material. Remember we talked about dielectric material? Yes. In this case, oh. we're using it one, K okay. of one, just air. Okay, so that's why you don't have that big complex structure. Right. This is, this is a very, huh. very simple uh, okay. Uh, test rig. Now, let me just also explain something to the audience because the camera angle, it's a little hard to see. If we were looking down straight from the top, the, let's look at this. Okay, the two poles are just it. for stability. They are not attached to anything. It's just a there place is. for him to attach the right. wire and this, here. This right, right here is a guide pole. It just keeps it in one place. If they didn't have it there, this okay. thing would be all over. And if we were to look down in it, literally we're just looking at a simple triangle with a cross beam of balsa wood and this pole that it can move up and down freely and there is nothing in there. There are there are no moving, no moving parts. parts in it. I will fully attest to it. No <laughs> moving parts, no motors, nothing hidden. I mean, I touched it. It's flimsy aluminum foil and balsa. Yeah. The only thing is this positive charge going in through that clip on the pole being hooked on here, and then there's a ground coming, looping around, and back into the same device. There is nothing else here. So what we're going to see is that he's going to, Jess, you're going to be turning on a positive and a yeah. negative charge. It's going to be all at once. It's, it's, it's just right there. The, and what the are we going to be The negative seeing? charge is the back over here. That's your ground wire. Okay. Simply we have a ground and we have a positive in that. Okay, point out the positive. Okay, remember this is a positive here. Okay. Actually coming well, down here now, all the way up to this and then back down to this post right here. Now what will, now the pole is for what reason? Why do you have this device on this center pole? Uh, the center pole is for guiding only. What would happen uh, if it weren't there, Jeff? It would be all over. In it fact, it could hit me, and uh, believe you me, 30,000 volts, even at one milliamp, it really gets your arm going, the muscles and that. If everyone knows about tasers, tasers can put out 100,000 volts in that, and you give it and stun a person with it. It doesn't kill them, but it sure doesn't feel good. Okay, so when you turn this on, I know before the show, you made me stand way back, which surprised me because you're so close, but you said you know how to handle it. So this well, is nothing I don't to let kids it, play with. I don't mind if it hurts me. I don't want it to hurt anybody right. else. Right, so this is a little dangerous. Now, you're going to hear some crackling noise. That is the power. Don't be afraid of it. Okay, you ready? Here we go. Here we go, folks. Oh, oh, Jess. 
Now, if that pole weren't there, it would be going forward. It would be a lot faster. It would be all over. It would be all over. Now, how come it's going up instead of forward? Because it can't go forward. It can't. Is the, the post so is it's guiding it. It's doing what it can. It's guiding it. It's this telling is, it which direction to move in. It sounds so Frankensteinian. I mean, Frankenstein-like here in the studio with that crackling. That's the electrical pot charging that. Uh, if we were on it even more... Uh, <gasps> Now, it's getting louder and more intense. What would happen if you kept it on? Hey, we're going to get some sparks down here. Actually, I don't have this all the way up. This is probably around 25,000 volts is all. So what happens if you turn it up a little bit? <laughs> well, my hair, thank God, is not standing up, but the noise is very alarming. And actually, we're about as high as we're going to go on it. Uh, because of the way the wires are in that. But that is all the way up. It's at 30,000 volts right okay, now. Okay, let's be quiet a second. You can hear okay, it. did you all hear... <laughs> did you all hear that static at home? That was intense. That last part, that's a discharge, and it, the device is set up for a discharge for that purpose and that. And uh, <laughs> have, if you wait a, a, <laughs> about half a minute, then you can touch this, and you won't get shocked. I'm not touching it. <laughs> you touch it. <laughs> this no, don't show do you it safe. on the air. No, safe? oh, God, Jess. It's safe. safe. <laughs> yeah, you told me you got shocked really bad before. I know, I know how to do this now, uh, but I warn people because it Ooh. is, and I took it in my right hand, and it's, it's like your muscles tighten up, and it's a real strange feeling. Yeah, and it took a almost a half an hour for me to get my hand back. Now, but, uh, now, Jess, weren't you tempted to get it off the pole when you first did it and just watch it flying oh, I've around? Done it. No, I've done it with that. I mean, can you uh, point, tell me what it did? Like, point with it's, your hand? It's or? all over, and it'll actually flip over. Uh, and, and then will it stay put, or will it no, pick it itself? No, it, you don't know which way it's going to go, and that's why I'm doing it, because it could come over and hit me. Oh, yeah. And then, bingo, I'm getting shocked. Well, did you put it in, like, a big plastic box, to like no, a loose side box? No, you don't do it. Yeah, you can't on that. Uh, it's, it's just that's out That's what of I want to see it flying freely <laughs> and going kind of wacky. That would be well, amazing. Well, it's a little strange to do it but that way. But the dangerous part has yeah. part. Okay, so if people do want to try this on their own... They need to be very careful. There's yes, be very careful. Understand, <laughs> it's low amperage, but there's very high voltage mm. in it, and it's like a taser. So if you yeah. anything know about tasers, it can uh, even at 30,000 volts, it can hurt. Now, and why is the copper? I always hear with electrical experiments, copper, copper, copper. Why is copper the copper is a so very important? Good, it's a very good electrical device in that for uh, movement of electrons. It's very, very high. Okay. So now, if people wanted to create one of these gravity control devices that looks just like this, what are the components that they need to learn more about, Jess? Well, uh, there's two websites. The first website that will show, it tells you where you can go to get the power source. Okay. These are about $120. Well, we can't mention we money can't on mention? the show, Jesse. Okay. Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> so you go there and you can find it on their website. You can download a PDF file for a catalog and you and can order And what are they directly. specifically asking for? Or what do they want to look for? Uh, they call it anti-gravity in there. Shame oh, on shame on them. They yeah, should but know it's, better. It's so much of these people okay. out there don't know what they're but looking at. But they've got it, but they, they don't even it. know what it is. And, okay, uh, so you can go... You we're look gonna through it and you'll actually see a small one like this kind of lifting up on a picture in it. Okay. And that way they'll know where to look for it to get this particular one here. Okay, so you need a capacitor, uh -huh. and we're going to show the website in a few minutes. Right. Um, uh, there's a site of a gentleman in, in France that has a lot of this on the, uh, quite an extensive website. Are you going to show that website as and well? The, the, I'll put the address up on that for it also. Okay. So that they will they can write it down and see where So they is. need the capacitor that we're showing here from mm -hmm. some website that we're going to show the addresses of in a moment. Well, like I said, this is the, this they make themselves. They a don't little bit get of, this from anywhere right, else. Right, a little bit but of. But you can download diagrams on how to balance. Okay, now it's it. it has to be very precise, Jess, yes. because it looks kind of like, oh, let's just make it if you don't get it right, if it's too heavy, it will not work. Or if that 30 millimeter... You have to get that uh, space there correctly. Okay. Even with this device here, with this discharge area, it has to be a certain distance here. And you play around with that when you first get it, and then it'll work. 
uh, the discharge at the end and that where a shot electrical charge between these two is sometimes it'll happen. It's there for safety reason. Okay. Instead of it discharging out, it discharges here. Okay. Now and I'd like to know if we have enough time left in the show to do one more demonstration. I'm a little I've lost a little bit of track of time here. So Okay, well we're gonna ready? Okay, looks like we got time. Let's do it again because that was very thrilling, Jess. Okay, everyone come in on it. Oops. See if I can get it to lift off here. Yeah. I'm going to use a little help here. Because oh. sometimes on this rod, it, it's a little bit loose here. Did we, did we overblow the circuitry? <laughs> What's wrong with our gravity? There it goes. It was already going. You didn't have to do that. Okay. I love this. <laughs> this is so wild. Actually, when this works on the rod and that, and it's lined up properly, it works even better. This is, actually, this is, uh, I've had this device for a couple months now. Now, why is, now when we, people say they hear, okay. Ooh, I love that sound. <laughs> but when people have witnessed UFOs going over, the big thing is silence. This is making a racket, Jess. It, when it gets into the actual craft, this disappears. When what gets into the actual craft? When you're actually getting into that, you don't hear any of this. Sometimes, uh, even with UFOs and that, people have heard hum noise, humming noises. Mm -hmm. And that's a possibility at times. But why is this making noise when... It's because the air is the dielectric, and so it's going to be a lot louder. Okay. And it, the way it is, this is so light, you weigh this in grams, mm -hmm. not ounces, grams. Maybe about uh, six grams at the most. Okay. Now, there's another component to your phenomenal inventions, Jess, and that has to do with free energy. Right. Can you talk to us about that, please? Well, the last time I was on, I told you that if I got somebody who was looking for that person who was not uh, going to rip it away from me, but to come in with the money, which I found, uh, I'm starting to put together the devices to actually do it. And what I have here, I'm going to take these out. <laughs> this is dielectric material. It's a high... Uh, uh, classified ceramic material. And it's aluminum based. And if they want to come in on that right there, that is looks actually like a piece of chalk. I hate to it tell It looks you like Jeff. chalk in there, but it's not. This is dialect. It, it's a ceramic material. And to, to make it, they have a little like grinding area where they actually cut it down into a, like a, a tube like this would be, and then they s slice Oops. it. And this actually is holds 9.1K. Wow. Which still is very low. But. But it's enough for a double A or a triple A battery at 1.6 volts. S wait, what does that mean? The equivalent of? This, yes. That you this no is, longer would need the battery, you just use this, this? These are actually put together. This material is inside this. You made that the outside of what looks like a battery is actually filled yeah, see, with this a ceramic. Exactly, it's, it's this right here, this material inside here. These, what I've done is I've taken uh, off of a regular battery, just the end pieces. To and make the connection. What I've done, though, to uh, epoxy on it, it's a very expensive uh, aluminum-based epoxy. Okay. Which allows electrical currents and so on through it to attach these. And then I have to, I'm going to be charging this. Once I get it charged, it will stay permanently charged. Permanently. So permanently. if we run our radio or a Walkman you can, on it, it's never going to drain? You put these in, like I have a, uh, a CD player in that, and it uses double A, so it takes two of them. I put these two in there, and never? it will never run out of power. How come you haven't done it yet? It's, it's getting some of the equipment necessary to charge it. Can I hold these? Yeah. Let's see that. And I want to hold that, too. There you go. Oh, it just looks like chalk. That is just, but it's not. I can this tell is it is. This ceramic in that. These are actually, uh, they cost me uh, a fair amount for each one in that. Wow. Oh, I can On see how you did create this yourself. Okay, it, it looked like a normal battery when you held it up over there, but now that it's up close, yeah. you have electrical tape over the outside, and then you right. put the positive and that's negative, two, the normal ends on batteries. On yeah, this. actually, these right here, 
as the way they are, it could be positive on either side. Depends really? on how you set it up. I love the way you have them dated, too. That's very this clever. This is what I dated so I know when I put these together. Oh, my goodness. So this is a complete substitute for batteries. This is amazing. Mm -hmm. Well, well Jess, we're even going to get into batteries for your laptop. Oh, perfect. Your cell phone. Lamps. You won't have to look for an outlet to plug a lamp in. It'll have its own power source in it. Oh, I am so this sick of wires all over the place. That would be a real trip. That would that be a real trip. That is the dispatch. outcome of this technology. My life, I, I would be a very happy woman not to have wires everywhere in my life. I'm sick to death of them. <laughs> but our time is almost up, Jess. Mm -hmm. Do you believe it? That was very thrilling. Absolutely remarkable. The demonstration was thrilling. Let's put your website information up on the screen. I know people are okay. going to want to follow These up with it. These are sites that uh, you can do. The first one is the Brown Family website. Oh. Actually, I didn't put in the, the website. Uh, uh, the next one, I can do that. Okay. Uh, this is the family website for T. Townsend Brown. Read it. Which is www.ttbrownbrown. Dot com. That wow. goes to the family website. Excellent. Which is excellent. There's a lot of material on that site. You can see in that. The next one down is the uh, is the site for this gentleman in France, and that, oh. and that's J L N L A B S. That's J L N Labs dot com. And he has a lot of material on it. You can see all kinds of stuff. Is that where you can get information about this capacitor, or you have no. another one? No. This ah. is okay. This is information unlimited. Uh, the top is a uh, P.O. box, but you can go to amazing one, the number one dot com. It's a m a z i n g one dot com, and you can go right to the website. You can order from the website. And they're the ones who have the information the about the capacitor that you had here on the show today. Right. Okay. All right. Wow. Well, let's give you a little bit more uh, information here on the screen about other things happening. So. We are having MUFON meetings regularly, the Mutual UFO Network here in Sacramento. They are being held on the last Saturday of every single month. Been going on for quite a while. Very intelligent, stimulating conversation by the people who show up. Absolutely love it. It's from 12 noon to 2 p.m. And it's at Round Table Pizza on La Riviera Drive in Sacramento. And for information about this meeting, you can call area code 916. 366-0351. And UFO Connection, we are on the airs when on the air Wednesdays at 9:30 p.m., Fridays at 5:30 a.m. right here on your cable channel 17. The first Wednesdays of each month are the new episodes and the other Wednesdays are reruns of old shows. Comments, questions, contact us at www.ufoconnection.net. Also, you can listen to reruns of the UFO Connection on the internet radio, along with other fascinating shows that you can find here on Sacramento Access Station, such as Journey to the Paranormal, on www.live365.com slash journey to paranormal. Fabulous reruns. Tune in. You'd be amazed what you're going to discover. Well, this was a rousing, exciting show. Jess, we are honored and thrilled. First of all, we're thrilled that you got funding through one of our Sacramento UFO Connection viewers. Thank you out there, whoever you are, because we know you're being anonymous. But thank you for your generosity. You just benefited all of us. We're thrilled. We're honored you brought it to share with us again. This was very exciting, Jess. And I hope, and if there's more funding out there available, we hope they get in touch with you so you can continue your research. And, uh, and are you open to people getting in touch with you, Jess? Oh, yes. Uh, uh, we'll put up my, uh, my email. And okay. And take it that way first. Okay. Uh, I don't tell people where I actually am. Okay. Uh, for now, safety reasons. You are a little concerned then. Yes. I'm getting at a point now where... Uh, Hopefully, the, they're not watching. Okay. So and let's put your, and let's talk about your email then. Why don't you read that off, please? Okay. It's D-J-F-R-I-T-C-H, and it's actually, they got it wrong there. It's, it's supposed to be 2002. Oops. Okay. At yahoo.com. Okay. So they need to, right after D-J Fritch, put the 2002, then at yahoo.com. Okay, good. 
Very good for correcting yeah. that. All right, so you're open to hearing from our viewers who are interested in supporting your work, have questions about it, want to just chat with you to intellectualize about what's going on. Yeah, from the last time I had a, a few people that did email me, and so I hope they see this one. I'm going to let them know. Very good. <laughs> oh, I'm delighted that our viewers got in touch with you. Very good. Well, Jeff, we hope that you continue on with your work. We hope you will grace us again with coming back as new developments unfold. We all hope for your safety that nobody starts hassling you now that it's all happening and coming into place. Is there anything you want to add um, just before we sign off on this episode? Uh, people can get in touch if they'd like to learn more about this. I have material that uh, they can get from me. I, I don't charge a lot. I have all of Brown's patents that are available. I have uh, documents that uh, were put out in 1956 uh, uh, that talks about at that time they were hoping for a Mach 3 attack disc. Uh, it cruises at Mach 64. <laughs> wow. And uh, some other pamphlets in that, and I have uh, audio uh, CDs and other materials in that. Okay, so you have lots of information to share with people. So thank you, Jess Fritch. We are thrilled to have you. It was a very exciting show. And on behalf of the UFO Connection, I'm your host, Cynthia Siegel. Thank you so much for watching. And remember, keep looking up.